Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have discussed about how to create a CMOS universal symbol in LTSPICE. So in this video, I will show you how to plot voltage transfer curve, which is a plot of input versus output voltage. From such a graph, we will be able to obtain the midpoint voltage, noise tolerance, gain, and operating logic level. First of all, let's take a quick review of how to draw a schematic of CMOS inverter. As we know, a CMOS circuit is a combination of PMOS and NMOS transistors. PMOS is at the top and NMOS is at the downside. Connect the drain and gates of both P and N channels together. Output line is connected to the drain and input line is connected to the gates. Then connect the body of each device directly to the device's sources. The source of N channel is connected to the ground and the source of P channel is connected to a power supply. So now let's create a label net for each nodes. Type V in and place it here. We also need one for the source of P channel, one for the output, and one for the source of N channel. Let's call the source of P channel as VDD, drain voltage as V out, and the source of N channel as ground, or simply G. In the next step, we need to create a SPICE model for both PMOS and NMOS transistors. These are my SPICE models, and I am gonna select them all, then copy and paste it to the SPICE directive, here in the text box. Click OK and put it here. This is the SPICE model of PMOS and this one is for the NMOS. To connect these SPICE models to PMOS and NMOS, we need to change the name of each channel similarly to the SPICE model. This one is PM1 and this one is NM1. To plot voltage transfer curve, we need two voltage sources for V in and V D D. So let us label this one as V in and this one as V D D. Connect each of them to the ground and also connect the source of N channel to the ground. Let us give 5 volt to VDD. And for the input voltage, let us sweep over a certain range. Go to edit simulation command and click on DC sweep. And the name of source to sweep is V1. Put type of sweep to linear. Let us sweep it from 0 to 5 with increment of 0 0.01. Click OK. Let us run it. A new window will be created to draw our waveform. The x axis shows the range of input voltage that varies between 0 and 5. Let us see the change of output voltage corresponding to input voltage. That is how voltage transfer curve looks like. When the input voltage is low, the NMOS becomes off and PMOS gets on. 
the output voltage is equal to 5 volt. As the input voltage increases, the output voltage stays the same until the end channel starts conducting. When we reach the threshold voltage width of the end channel, at this point, which input voltage is perhaps around 2.5 volt, both transistors are conducting. As the input voltage gets larger, the end channel conducts more, but the P channel conducts less. When the output voltage reaches at the minimum point, input voltage gets high and is equal to VDD, 5 volt. At this point, PMOS becomes off and NMOS becomes on. NMOS pulls V out to ground. So, output voltage will be equal to zero. Now, let's find the midpoint voltage VM. At this point, both NMOS and PMOS are in saturation and V in equals to V out. The formula to get midpoint voltage expressed like this. Here we have VDD, VTP, VTN, beta N, and beta P. And the only parameters that we can vary is, is one of these parameters, either beta N or beta B. The expression for beta N and beta P represent like this. Since length L is constant for all transistor, so we need to vary the weight of one of our transistor. So let's change the weight of PMOS as variable. Let's call it X. So to vary the weight of our transistor, go to the SPICE directive and here in the text box, type in dot step param and access the variable of the parameter to sweep. I will use the start value as 1 mm, stop value as 50 mm with an increment of 10 mu. Click OK. Now let's run our circuit to see how output voltage change corresponding to V in input voltage. That is how the output voltage change with respect to V in when varying the weight of transistor. If we plot the input voltage, we will clearly see that the midpoint voltage is also varying. But midpoint voltage is the point where V in equal to V out. So that is occurring at this point at step 4. So to draw only step 4, right click from VU, go to select steps. And from here you can select any steps you want. I am going to select step 4. Okay. Now you can see only the step 4 waveform and that is how to get the midpoint voltage. If you put the cursor, you will see the intersect that occurs around at 2.5 volt, both at vertical and horizontal axis. So this is called the DC transfer curve and it is a plot of V in versus V out. And the significant point of this curve is this part and this part of the curve, where there is no power dissipation because both transistor is off. When both transistor is on for a certain time, we will get a drain current curve, which looks something like this. Let's bring this schematic circuit simply as a CMOS inverter symbol.
so we need to delete all these voltage sources and these ones we also need to delete this ground then label it in the next step we need to save it i'm going to save it in lts clip which i have already created you can save in any folder you want i will name it as cmos then create a new symbol this is the plus where you can draw the cmos inverter symbol from draw i can take line and draw the CMOS symbol uh, which looks something like this bring a circle uh, put it in the convenient plus in the next step we need to name the pins the same as we have given previously here in the CMOS schematic go to edit click on add pin type vin similarly do for vdd vout and ground Now use line to connect pins to inverter symbol. Next go to edit from attribute click on edit attribute. Change symbol type to cell. Then from attribute window select instant name. Finally, save it to the same folder which we saved it is schematic and gave the same name CMOS. Click on save. Now let's create a new schematic to see how our CMOS symbol works. Go to the component and change the top directory to the folder that you saved the CMOS symbol. If you face difficulties at this point, you can watch the previous videos and I will put the related videos in the description. Select CMOS. OK. That is how a CMOS inverter looks like. Let us bring voltage sources for the input and VDD. Name these two pins as V in and this two as VDD. Connect this pin to the ground and also add ground to the voltage sources. Let us also label the output voltage pin. Similarly, give 5 volt to VDD and sweep input voltage over a certain range so for that go to edit simulation command and from dc sweep name of the source to sweep is v1 put type of sweep to linear let us sweep it from 0 to 5 with increment of 0 0.01 click ok then use spice directive to give values for weight of CMOS transistor. The variable name was X. Let's give the same value as we have given previously. Now let us run our circuit and plot the waveform. Yes, it is the same waveforms 
as we have already plotted. I think it is enough for today. So, see you in the next video.